everyone. It's Deborah Poneman, founder of Yes to Success, where we share knowledge and tools for you to live your ultimate life and ageless. Anti-aging for your brain, your body, and your future. And today I want to talk about freedom. Now I've shared a version of this Success Saturday before, but I thought it was time to bring it up again since there's been a lot of talk lately around the world uh, on what freedom means and are we losing our harder freedoms? And there are a lot of differing, differing opinions about what freedom means. Do we have the freedom to decide what we want to do with our own bodies? How about the right to bear arms and what's happening around freedom of speech? Is freedom the right to speak our truth without fear or repercussions? What if our truth puts others in jeopardy? Is freedom the right to live in a democracy in a country where the rights of all are honored and freedom is not denied to some for their personal choices or dictated by a few? I often ponder that question and the question of a different kind of freedom or actually the basis to freedom which is inner freedom. When most people think of the great Austrian psychiatrist and psychotherapist, Viktor Frankl, they don't usually think of the genius who developed the psychological approach known as logotherapy. Instead, they justifiably think of the Holocaust survivor who gave a new meaning to the word freedom. In Frankl's classic book, Man's Search for Meaning, he famously said, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we're challenged to change ourselves. What I believe that Frankel was saying was that simply each of us has total freedom because freedom is not something dictated by our outer circumstances, but rather determined by our inner state. I mean, if Frankel could experience freedom in a concentration camp where the absolute worst of human depravity was inflicted on the prisoners, can we not experience freedom when we feel trapped in a job or a relationship or a life circumstance and are more often than not prisoners of our own making? If we learn nothing else from Viktor Frankl, it's that freedom is a choice we have to make at every moment. And there is always a choice. So let's look at some of the things we might be able to do in our own lives to achieve the type of freedom that seems unattainable by us mere mortals. First, have a purpose greater than yourself. Why? Well, one of the observations Frankel made was that the prisoners who survived had a purpose that inspired them to keep going no matter what a responsibility to something greater than themselves. For some, it was a child who they managed to send off to a country where they were safe, or a spouse they believed would be waiting for them once they were liberated. For others, it was an unfinished book or piece of art or a scientific work that they'd begun. They knew their contribution would make the planet a better place, and they needed to complete it before they died. Those who held a vision of what they wanted to create in the world, even if it just lived in their hearts, were often the ones who made it out alive. The vision gave them the courage to live and a sense of inner freedom. In his teachings, Frankel often refers to the words of Nietzsche who said, he who knows the why for his existence will be able to bear almost any how. Next, do what I call sharing your bananas. <laughs> sharing your bananas? Yeah. In my life, I've often worked and played amongst the wealthy and successful. I mean, I'm not BFFs with Warren Buff Buffett, although I did go on a private safari once with Richard Branson and his family. But I do have to say that the majority of my associates statistically are in the top 1% of the world's wealthiest and or most successful individuals, but are they the most free? Although I hesitate to be the judge and jury of how free they consider themselves to be, I'd say that some of the people I've grown to know and love who are in aluminum huts in Haiti are far more free. Why? Well, I think the answer is illustrated in something Marianne Williamson once said to me. I just returned home from India and was telling her about my visit to a community of people who literally lived in tarps 
under tarps and a junkyard. The tarps are kind of slung over tree branches, but they seem so happy. And I was talking to her about how it was just so incongruous to me. And she shared the words of some anthropologist, I don't remember the name, who said, the reason these people are happy is if they have two bananas, they will always give one away. The reason why so many people we know in this country of plenty are so miserable is that they have all the bananas they want and they have no interest in sharing them. Frankel saw men who had everything taken from them, including their families, their homes, their livelihoods, their possessions, even their names that became numbers tattooed on their arms, but they never lost their freedom to share their bananas. Frankel, Frankel said, and I actually have a quote because I want to share it exactly. He said, we who lived in the camps can remember the men who walk through the huts comforting others and giving away their last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Frankel even recounts a time when a guard at great risk to himself secretly gave him a piece of bread. And to that, Frankel said, it was far more than the small piece of bread which moved me to tears at the time. It was the human something this man gave to me, the word and look which accompanied the gift. Next, be a decent human being. Yet, even though there were those who shared their figurative bananas, Frankel also shared the story of the senior warden who was a prisoner himself, but who beat other prisoners at the tiniest indiscretion, leading Frankel to conclude that the mere knowledge that a man was either a camp guard or a prisoner tells us almost nothing. Human kindness can be found in all groups, even those which, as a whole, it would be easy to condemn. Franken, Frankel speculates that, or speculated that there are really only two types of people, decent human beings and indecent human beings, and both can be found everywhere. They exist in every group and every society. I look at them as free human beings and captive human beings. Those who are bound by hate are not free. Those who can find a way to love and be decent human beings, even in the most unbearable circumstances, are free. Actually, I remember in, it must have been 1968, when my brother was accepted at Harvard, which was a very big deal. My father never finished high school. And although my mother was valedictorian of her high school class, she never had the opportunity to go to college. But I remember my mother, when her friends were saying to her, you must be so proud of Larry going to Harvard. Her reply was always some rendition of, of course, I'm very proud of Larry. But the most important thing to his father and I is that he and Debbie are decent human beings. And that's the type of freedom that each of us has the opportunity to experience every day of our lives, to be decent human beings. And Frankel in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, eventually concludes that there is no final answer to the question, what is the true meaning of life? He says that we all need to answer that question for ourselves. But he does say that life essentially tests us at every moment. And the answer is revealed in how we respond. He says that freedom is not found on some mountaintop, but is found daily and hourly and the choices we make. And finally, Frankel says about the meaning of life, quote, we had to learn ourselves. And furthermore, we had to teach the despairing men that it did not really matter what we expected from life, but rather what life expected from us. So, Hopefully I've given you something to, to ponder, especially at this time. What does life expect from us? So I'll see you next Saturday 
And until then, I send you my love. Thank you.